Good day everyone. I hope you are doing great wherever you are watching this video. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use Hydros, just like an introduction to Hydros for unsaturated simulation or geoenvironmental simulation. We're going to be looking at a practical example. So assuming we have soils, sand, silt and clay and they're under the same condition, they have the same volume and they are top boundaries open to the atmosphere and we want to drain water from them into the cylinder. We want to understand their SWCC characteristics, the soil water characteristics of how they are able to retain water based on their property. Um, just to put it in perspective, I'm talking if you're familiar with something like this, talking about um, the water that can be retained at different suction level for each soil. So in this case, we'll be simulating a geometry of 10 meter high and 2 meter in diameter. So let's go to our hydros. Just click on file and click on new. So let's name this example example one sand drain. We'll be starting with sand sand drain. Then we click on next. So it's asking us for the domain we want to simulate. So we're going to be using a 2D domain. I'll be using 2D axis symmetry. And paying attention to this is showing you that it can do it in a cylindrical way. So we're going to change our unit to meter. So, so our dimension for hex. Since we are doing axis symmetry and we have a diameter of 2 meters, so we'll be doing a radius of 1 meter since we are doing axis symmetry. So this is going to be 1 meter and our height is going to be 10 meter. Then you can check this and check this. I can talk about them later on. Then you click next. The next thing is asking you now, what do you want to simulate? In this case, we are only simulating water. Maybe in the next video, I can show you how to simulate solid transport to click next. So this time information, how many days do you want to simulate? So for us, for the experiment, let's say we are starting with 10 days. So we are simulating 10 days and it's asking for time varying boundary conditions in this case the boundary conditions are constant so we won't need to check that and you click next so for your output information if we are simulating 10 days how do you want to see this output do you just want to see only the 10th day output or you want to see it every day or per hour so in this case we want to see it every day i'm going to make it 10 and i'm going to update it and click next the next thing is talking about the hydration i don't think you need to change anything here for now and your initial condition, how do you want to set it? Do you want to set it with prayer heads or with water content? We'll be setting it with prayer head. And you click next. So it's asking you for the soil hydraulic model. In this case, this is a popular hydraulic model of Van Ganesha and Mulem 1980. So we'll be going with that. We can talk about others later. And for hysteresis, we just will go with no hysteresis. Then we click next. So yes, asking you for the soil hydraulic parameters you want to use. Like I showed us in the beginning, we want to be doing sand, silt, and clay. But we will be starting with sand, so we can click sand. So for sand, these are the hydraulic properties. If you have a test you've performed in the lab and you have those properties of the material, you can input them here. But we'll be going with this one. The QR is just talking about theta r, the residual water content, and the QS is theta s is the saturated water content this alpha one of the 15 parameters this n one of the 15 parameters and this is the saturated hydraulic conductivity and this is i talking about the pore connectivity which for van Ganesha model it's usually assumed to be 0 0.5 and you click next just asking you for the meshing parameter i think everything is good if you want to change your mesh you can just uncheck the automatic and input the mesh you want to put in in this case i can input 0 0.1 just to make it like a more final mesh then you click next so it's saying the next step is going to be to define the transport model in a graphical mode so you are going to define the geometry of what you want to simulate to define the geometry you can use polyline and like we said it's going to be one meter in radius 10 meter high click on this Click on this, then you come and click apply. After you click apply, you're going to create a node outside. You can just click press escape. Then you right click on this and you delete the points. So this is your geometry. But for it to simulate in this Hydros software, you need to give it a surface. So to give it a surface, you can come here to under curves and click on the polyline. So this polyline, you want to give it a surface, then you click generate planar surface. So it's going to tell you that one or more surfaces were created successfully and you click OK. 
the next thing for us to do is to mesh so you can just go to the view or mesh button here and you're going to since we already set your mesh so you can just go ahead and generate mesh if you want to reset it or do any changes you can click on the fe mesh parameters and do whatever change you want to do but i think we are good with this so we're just going to click ok and we're going to generate our mesh so our mesh has been generated and we're going to just click close so the next thing is for us to or instead of doing that if you want to go continue from the mesh generation let me delete mesh again in case if you want to go right that way so let me generate the mesh again after generating the mesh you can click next mm -hmm. and it's going to tell you what you need to do it's going to tell you the next step in case you are still new to the software so it's telling you the next thing is to define the domain properties the initial condition and the boundary condition i'm going to click ok so for the domain properties we already set it as sun we don't need to change anything so we're just going to move straight to the initial condition and we're going to to set the initial condition remember during our settings when we were starting i made it prior head instead of water content so for the prior head uh for the test we want to simulate the assumption is all they, they are all saturated then we open the valve for them to drain out under gravity so since they are all saturated we are going to give a prior head that is related to full saturation so we are going to make it linear distribution with depth and usually for a satur for saturation it's supposed to be a prior head of zero that's like suction but it might take time for it to balance if you are using zero so in this case instead of using zero we are going to be using minus 0.01 so it's a linear distribution so that's going to help it to converge so it's still similar to saturation the minus is 0 0.01 so you are going to click apply and click ok so the next thing for us to set our boundary condition for the water flow so to set the boundary condition you need to do it on the mesh so i click water flow here but i'm unable to change anything here for you to be able to change the boundary conditions you need to come to the right side here and click on edit condition of fe mesh so in this case now can now apply our top surface is going to be atmospheric seeing white or not the boundary conditions currently is showing you that it is no flux but in our case this is going to be no flux this is going to be no flux and the top boundary condition is going to be atmospheric boundary condition so we click atmospheric and we are going to drag it from here to here so we've changed that to atmospheric and for the bottom boundary that's where water is going to be flowing out so we are going to make it seepage phase you can also use feed drainage but in this case you're going to be using seepage phase after you are done with that the next thing is for us to compute our simulation so you can just click compute do you want to run yes so it's going to take a while to estimate and when it's done you can click enter so the next thing is for us to check our result so for the result let's start with water content you can see like i said the water content at saturation is 0.43 and how is this 0.43 remember what you set during your water flow the hydraulic parameters the saturated water content is 0.43 that's why you are having 0.43 and the reason you're having 0.429 is because we did like a linear for the initial boundary condition which starts from 0.01 if you remember that so this is the one the zero so for you to check the one you can see so this is how the water content is changing over the day so this the one the two the three this is how it's changing across but for you to really make more sense from this result you can just come to results over here and click cumulative flux and change it to you want to see the seepage phase flux so you can see for 10 days this is the seepage phase, which is similar to those costs I was showing you initially. So after 10 days, we can see that the volume that has left the sand column is about 9.6 meter cube. And with this, let's make sense from what this is saying. So we can open an Excel sheet. So for sand, the radius is one, the area is pi d square, pi r square, and the height is 10. That means I'm going to get the volume by the area multiplied by the height. So the initial water content the initial water content is what we set here under parameter which is saturated water content 0.43 that's the initial we set saturated so we can input 0.43 as the initial water content 
So inputting 0.43 is telling you that the initial water storage, this is going to be initial water content multiplied by the volume of the soil. So this is the water that's inside the soil initially, the volume of water inside the soil. What about the residue? The residue water content from our simulation, you can check this again. It's 0 0.045, 0 0.045. So you can put 0 0.045. So this is telling you that the water storage that cannot leave, that the sand is going to be towed to, is 1.5 meter. So it's the drainable water storage is 12.10. So this is the water that can leave the storage. Let's now check after 10, time A is now 10 days now. So after 10 days, what is the volume of water that has left it after 10 days? So that's what we can check again in our community flux. So after 10 days, seepage flux, about 9.5 meter cube has left it after 10 days, about 9.5 meter cube. And what we noticed again from the graph is, as the time of days increases, increases, the rate at which water leaves is now decreasing. So let's check maybe just 10 days. Let's check. Let's go back to our time information. Let's make it to run for 15 days and say, okay, okay. So we are going to run our simulation again, compute, yes. Enter. So let's check our result for 15 days, cumulative flux, see page first. So for 15 days now, it increases to about 9.9. .9. What was the former one? 9.5, so it's now 9.9. .9. So that means the rate at which water is leaving the system is now decreasing. So it actually might take a long time for us to drain this amount of water that can leave the system, which is 12.10. So the next thing is for you to just check for sand. This sand, so you can just check for click and go back to your domain properties, material. So you can to set our material. Let's go to, uh, to set our material. Let's go to project information back. Let's just do next. Let's do next, let's do next, next, next. We are still maintaining that same day, next, maintaining the same. So instead of sand, let's choose silt. So these are the properties of silt. It has changed. We have 0.46 here and we have 0.034. Let's click OK, yes. So let's run and see how silt is going to perform. Enter. So let's take the cumulative flossics. Seepage fish. So you can see that for silts, after 15 days, it's only about 0 0.93 centimeter cube, meter cube rather, that has left it. This for time B is 15 days. We didn't do 10 for silt. So it's about 15. Sorry, it's a 0. Point, we're getting 0 0.93. That's the volume of water that has left silt after 15 days to show that it has a more retention capacity than sand, which is logical. So now compared to clay, clay is going to take a longer time for us to drain all this kind of amount. So for us to know the drainable amount for the silt, we can go back to our information. Let's go to flow, um, water flow, the hydraulic model. So the saturated is 0 0.46 and this is 0 0.034. So the saturated char content is 0 0.46 and this is 0 0.034. So the drainable is 13.3, but it's going to take a very long time. Um, just as I round up this video, let's just try to change the time to about, let's say 100 days and click next. Yes, and let's make it 100 updates. If you update, it won't really do it the way you want it. So you need to click default. Then that's when you can see your output the way you want it. Then you click OK. And let's compute again and see amount of water that is going to drain out of this silt after 100 days. So let's go back to our cumulative flossics. Click here and do seepage phase. So for after 100 days, the amount of water that is going to drain out of the seat is still about 2.4 meter cube. That tells us a lot about how silt is going to retain water after 100 days. So
So thank you for watching. This is just like an introduction to see how things are, how Sun clay seem to behave. Just with the same we have explained, you can go ahead and check for clay. Thank you for watching.